Hi guys, Richard from Sharpshooting UK here. I've been spending some more time with the PM2 5-25, which is getting long in the tooth now. It's interesting to see how that stands up to modern comparisons. The 40mm Crusader, I've already talked about how um, epic a scope that is. The 40mm IORs are uh, right at the top. The 35mm is a good, a good value but the 40 mils are really something. And you know that uh, that's uh, been my, uh, what, what, what I've been promoting for, for some years really. Um, it's interesting to get a PM2 for a few months and test it again. Uh, with new scopes that have come out, the uh, overachieving 30 mil Swarovski X5, for example. What about new players? like the brilliant value for money DMR and ERS, you know, the 34mm Elite Tacticals from Bushnell. Um, what about some cheap Japanese glass from the same factory as uh, some of the top scopes? Here I've got a Delta. There's very, very interesting uh, things to be said here, so uh, let's get cracking. Right, PM2. It really needs no introduction. Back in the day, they came out with a tough scope with lots of adjustment with a variety of different um, turrets, you know, different RETs, and MOA, you know, a really good uh, customizability, uh, single turn, double turn. And the glass was, was fantastic, um, especially at the top end. The combination of contrast, brightness, and resolution was unbeatable. But a lot of time has gone by and a lot of good scopes have come out. A lot of really good scopes have come out and they push the PM2 harder. Back in the day, you used to look at the top of the mag, 25 times in this case. Um, you'd look to see if the RET had some graduations on it and you'd be, oh, there we go, that, that, that's a tactical scope. What's happening now is scopes are doing that with ever more field of view crazy field of view compared to how it used to be. They're doing it with perfect bottom ends, not just top ends. A lot of people reviewing scopes will whack it on 25, go long range and, and, and judge the scope. But it also does five at the bottom. Is it any good down there? What happens if it's really soft and milky down there? You know, the whole thing needs to be assessed all the way through the range and uh, compared to other scopes in the same price bracket. And as to price bracket, the PM2 has never been cheap. Optics Warehouse have been doing some deals in the UK um, where they're down towards the 2K mark. They're not worth any more than that now. So it's good because at 3K, no chance. Let's get to brass tacks here. The main competition in tactical scopes for this now are things like the 6-24 colours. Um, the, obviously you've got the Night Forces. Um, you've got to be talking about IOR recon and you can nearly get into a Crusader they're only a bit over 2,000 pounds and that does 5.8 all the way to 40 so you start to think blimey 5 to 25 then 30 then 32 then 36 then 40 you know you're getting a lot more scope for your money so obviously that needs to be considered and here we've got the more compact Swaro that's 5 to 25 what can that do? So, let's see. Oh, and uh, let's not forget down here, we've got a sub thousand pound DMR. Right, okay. The glass is absolutely sublime at the top. It's one tests, it's very, very wonderful glass. It is a Schmidt and Bender, they don't mess about. Lovely. Let's look at the rest of the scope. The 5 25 isn't my favourite scope in their range, it never has been. And the reason for that is, one, it's only 5 to 25 and there were others doing more, but you don't get 5. It tunnels terribly at the bottom. None of their other scopes do, but the 5 to 25 is more like a 6.5 to 25. That's, that's not cool. It's not cool at all. It's a known problem. They don't need my help to sell these things. They haven't fixed it. You know, the design was completed and it has this flaw in it. It's still done terribly well, but be aware guys, you know, it ain't five to 25. It isn't even nearly five to 25. What concerned me more doing the side-by-side -side tests was that 
if you compare it to a Crusader, 5.8 to 40, the resolution and field of view and the quality of the glass at the bottom of the IOR, say at six, actually made me laugh out loud compared to the Schmidt and Bender at six or seven at the bottom. The image at the bottom of the SMB is not good. It's not good. It does not hold its resolution and it's and all of those optical qualities are they're all scaled down at the bottom. It only really starts to be a really modern, world-class piece of optics above about 20, to be honest. Furthermore, its eye box, i.e. unfussiness of getting a sight picture, is humbled by something like the Carlos 6 to 24. The Carlos is effortlessly better. The Swarovski is effortlessly better. And then, unfortunately, you get to field of view. The field of view on the uh, PM2 5-25 to is no longer alpha. It's, it's no longer alpha. The mid-range scopes are beating it. It's not good enough. It's, it's beaten by the Swarovski, which is compromising because it's on a 30mm tube. And it is absolutely embarrassed by the IOR. At any mag you choose, the IOR's got feet more field of view. The Alphas used to be in a bracket all of their own where no one could touch them. And that's why you spent 3,000 pounds. The fact of the matter is that the PM2 can only live in that bracket for optical quality at the very top, at, at 25. The rest of the mag range, it's not good enough. And all of the mag range, the field of view is not so good decent obviously it's expensive premium scope but compared to the competition you put it side by side with the crusader it's uh it's it's not good enough so obviously this is an old scope they have moved on these guys do not mess about their new 5 to 45 looks very very interesting indeed um it, this has never been my favorite uh, s and b but i have to report that compared to your modern competition it's nowhere Sorry guys. I must say as well that the turrets, I like the different options that you can get and I like their more tactile clicks. That's uh, got to help, that's uh, good thinking. Just want to show you something about the turrets. These are the double turn turrets, okay? So simply you go around to good clicks, really good. Go around to there and you just follow the top line up. So you're now at 36, 38, up here. It shows you there. Simple. With regard to readability, I think things have moved on. These, you know, used to be massive turrets, but now they're fairly small, or well, they're certainly not large. Very tightly geared. By that I mean you've got really quite small spaces between your clicks. So that's three and a quarter, three and a half. In low light, they're not leading edge for legibility. Let's just get that out there. I actually made a mistake with them the other day. I haven't made a mistake with my turrets in years. I made a mistake with these. I put three and a half of wind on or something and it was it was it wasn't right. So zero stop, obviously. Good clicks. But I think and have always thought they're a little fine. But I come from IOR clicks and if you look at the crusader here. Uh, sorry, look how big the gaps are there would be two clicks in each of them on the uh, PMT. You see, bigger clicks. Just saying, you know, just personal. The MTC's nice. Um, this is a, focus again, sorry. This is the windage. Mark both ways, obviously, no, certainly mistakes there. Yeah, it's 16 and a bit each way, then a hard stop. That is great. That's a lot of wind. A lot of scopes you only get to, say, six minutes, and then you start hitting the countings from the other side. So that's well thought out. You can choose options here. You can have a double turn, etc., etc. Um, you know, nice. Just a little bit finely geared for, for my liking, but clearly, uh, clearly quality. I've never liked the fact that on the top here, 
Let me get my metering right. Just showing you uh, what the markings are. That's a sticker. It's not quite central. See, hits in that bottom corner, but doesn't there. That bugs the hell out of me. Gotta say, guys, three thousand dollars and I get a sticker. They've just put a much better thought out MOA ret in um, in this. Right there we go, guys. So what we've got in the middle is that crosshair. The first gap's two minutes. Are there one minute hashes? And then at the outside edge, you've got some measuring bars. That's progress. All, all, all the qualities there. The illumination's very well done. It really was ahead of its time. When it first came out, nothing could touch it. You had high mag hunting scopes like the Zeiss Victory 6 to 24, which didn't have the clicks, didn't have the elevation, didn't have the illumination, didn't have the adjustability of different options. You know, this was just, you know, we do owe this our respect, this scope. It just can't live with the modern options. Just can't live with them. Um, the turrets hang in there just about, if you like, and fine, and the options help it. The rets are there or thereabouts, especially with the addition of the uh, new MOA one. Um, it's just the, the optics in this, particularly at the bottom end. They just can't cut it, and uh, the field of view uh, field of view is nowhere near as good as it needs to be. Um, as I say, safe bet, but... Uh, there are safer bets. I'm very interested to see what the 5-45 will do because that's all latest stuff and um, that is some mag range. I mean, I've said this with the, with the Crusader, you know, 5.8 to 40. Now that's what I'm talking about for my money. Getting a 5 that goes to 45, yeah, that is more like it. Now, I know, for example, that the 12 to 50 is going to get this new RET. That's very exciting. Very, very exciting indeed. The 12 to 50 is a complete masterpiece of optical engineering. At 12, it's utterly sublime in every way. At 50, you've barely lost a thing. It's just the most wonderful thing. I'm not trying to bash um, Schmidt and Bender here. What I'm saying is the 5 to 25 is really showing its age. And you need to think hard about buying a Recon or a Crusader before you buy a PM25 to 25. I'm sorry, got to be honest. Um, I would prefer the X5. Well, the X5 is a lot of money, but what people like about the X5 is that it's just that much more compact. And if you're wondering, you know, how much of a compromise am I making buying a Mini 5 to 25 rather than the, you know, one of the originals? The fact of the matter is, the Suara is better in almost every way. Um, Although, it must be said, of course, you can get FFP um, versions of this. It's a very versatile scope, lots of options. That is definitely a, a big plus, don't get me wrong. But if we primarily focus on glass, um, no, the bottom end's just too weak. Even things like the DMR, the DMR doesn't have the resolution at the top. It's not a 10 out of 10 sharp scope, but in every other area, it's given nothing up, guys. Um, at dusk, the PM2 shows real class, as you would expect from an Alpha, but it doesn't have the um, optical quality low down, and of course the field of view and, and, and the eye box, it doesn't have them to compete with something modern um, of, the same, of the same class. So, um, yeah, sorry, I don't mean to bash on the PM2, but it's interesting for me because for years, I've been saying, look, these IORs are good value. You know, there are other scopes that can knock off these alphas at the top and you don't need to spend $3,000 or £3,000, you know. And, and, and then, but you were always aspiring to get near the PM2 or equal the PM2. What's happened now is quietly, these other scopes have got better and better. The PM2 has obviously stayed the same. And now I can report, you know, clear as day the Crusaders are much better scope top to bottom field of view included everything not just in one area it kills the PM2 um, I can say that uh, you know it is no longer the pinnacle um, of, uh, of, of what is available it's done very well it's had a good run but it's shown its age despite the um, well thought out new ret and the overall quality of the of the device 
at this price have got to be harsh and you uh, you could pick this out of the box and go what a, what a masterpiece but I compare it in the field over many months to all of the other premium options or as many of them as I can get hold of um, and uh, the Iowa the 40 mil Iowa's have got it killed the um, things like the DMR are right behind it in, in most areas.